Hello, so I wanted to show how you actually connect this uh, a little bit more clearly. So here, the O-ring is actually in place. It wasn't in place in the last video. We have our O-ring there to provide a seal. And we put our orifice on top. We mentioned making like a marking just with a marker on your on your cell. Like put like two dots in a particular way and just record what that is. Just so you can know that you're using the same orifice each time. Otherwise, you'll have to take and record the dimensions of that cell each time. And then we're going to try to delicately place that clip on top. Then we put our O-ring clip in place. And then this should be able to go right on top. And then we should be able to look inside and mostly see that everything is aligned. And then we just take one of our clips and assemble. Let's put it here. So the way this works, we clip, attach, and then this takes a little bit of effort to contract the spring. So we get that in place there. And so now at this, at this point, you can see inside, you can, uh, where's the camera? Okay, you can see inside that our orifice is in place and everything is clamped down. Okay, so from there, what we're going to do is attach here. And again, every time you attach metal to metal, you need something to seal against. So you need to add one of these rubber clips. Very important that you use one of these ring clips. Um, you know, so if you're finding that things aren't clamping well or that they seem loose, it's probably because you don't have that rubber O-ring clip in place. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, pause, get that connected. Okay, so here's our sublimation cell now in place. And you can see we have used one of our clips, clamped down on that. Um, and we haven't yet played with any of the valves yet. So if you notice the pressure here is reading, you know, 866 torr. These aren't really calibrated to read atmospheric pressure, but this is just at atmospheric pressure because we haven't played with any of the valves yet. Now, in your handout, I think I went through um, a valve procedure. I can't remember if I went through a precise valve procedure, but it's relatively complicated, but each of the valves here serves a particular purpose. There's actually four valves. So we see one here, one here, one here, and one back here. And so if we notice that this valve here, what this valve is, is between our diffusion pump and its exhaust pump. This valve here is actually between the exhaust line of this pump and between the, um, or excuse me, it's between the sublimation region. If I open this valve here, this goes to the tube that leads to our sublimation region. And then the other side of that valve is this pump. It's the mechanical pump. So if I open this valve right now, the mechanical pump is going to pump on the sublimation region. Ideally, I'm going to open this final valve here, which is currently closed. I'm going to open this valve at some point so that I can introduce the sublimation pump to pump in that region to flow our gases through our cold trap onto our sublimation pump. So now the only issue here is that this oil here is pretty reactive to air, primarily oxygen in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the exhaust valve. It was open. I'm going to close it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this valve here. And I'll explain why I'm doing this. I'm opening this valve here to do a pre-vacuum. So I'm pre-vacuuming the region here. I stop pumping on my diffusion pump momentarily so that, that we don't hurt this pump, that we don't introduce that high pressure of the sublimation region as we pump it out through the mechanical pump. So now once it gets below about 100 millitor and it's at 83, 80, less than 80 millitor right now, then I can redo the, the valves. I close the valve that I had just opened, reopen my exhaust valve. There's a valve here that says always open. That's open. So that's good. And then I just open that final valve. So now if things go well, I'm going to get a lower pressure here than I do here. I'm going to get a little bit of a lower pressure with my uh, sublimation pump. So right now I'm getting below 20 millitor. That pump had just been turned on, so it's probably going to get a little bit lower than that as we continue the experiment. And then I'm at about 50, just below 60 millitor uh, with the mechanical pump uh, on the exhaust line of our pump. Okay, and so 
Um, I didn't mention when we should hit a, a, a thermometer or when we should hit start. Maybe I'll mention that in the second video. But in the second video, I'll go through how when we start to see that pressure hit about 100 millitor, we hit go on our temperature probe. But we'll get that set up in a second video. So uh, valve procedure, you may want to like jot down the notes that what we did was uh, this valve is number one. So we closed one, this valve's two, and opened two. Then closed two, opened one, and then we finally opened three. This valve is always open. This valve is helpful later in the experiment, like once you leave usually, when I close this valve as a means of taking this trap off while this pump's still hot. So this valve is kind of a helpful valve for me later on when I'm trying to clean out the trap. So then once your material is being sublimed, it's going to uh, deposit on the, on the cold trap here to prevent that material from getting into the pumping system and being harmful to the pumps. So that's the basic valve operation for the experiment. I'll probably go through that one more time, but I'll mention the uh, temperature and data collection in the uh, next video.